be close enough that I'll be able to... He doesn't say anything. You don't say anything? anything. You just just a pretty face. Okay. What's up, guys? Uh, you're watching Best Fan TV. I'm Isis Essery here with A Tribe Called Red. How are you guys doing? Very well. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Um, so for uh, people who don't know you, let's give a little, little background. What's A Tribe Called Red all about? Who are you? Uh, we're a group of Aboriginal DJs and producers who came together to throw a party for our community. So um, I hear you play Pow Wow Step. You want to describe that? What exactly is it? Well, give me a definition on that. Uh, it's sampling traditional powwow music yeah. uh, and mixing it with uh, contemporary club and EDM music. Yeah. So do you have a specific process for that? Because I, that's very different than what most people do. Like, do you hear a Northern Cree song and you're like, that's dope, I gotta put a track to it? Or sometimes. is it kind of the other way around? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, it depends on like what, it is, like what the project we're working on. If you know we're, we're doing a remix and like someone's like, all right, I want you to remix this song, yeah. then we have something to start with, right? right. Or uh, if we have, if we just want to make music, we kind of sit around and, and start with the drums and then build stuff from that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's different processes depending on what we want the outcome to look like. Yeah. Really, the I mean, really the process is the same. It's just we're not sampling funk or right. reggae yeah, or yeah. we're sampling. Well, sometimes we are, but <laughs> <laughs> we're also sampling powwow music. Yeah. You know, I think it, more than it being a different process, it's just a different element that we're bringing into it. Something that hasn't been explored before. Right. And um, you all come from kind of different backgrounds. How does that work? Like, how do you get that collaboration really solid together? Well, yeah, the different backgrounds kind of meld together when you're in an in a urban setting, right? Yeah. So they're they're both Cayuga, I'm Ojibwe, and our like our nations and our languages are as different as like English and Chinese. Yeah. And like our, our traditions and stuff are, are completely different. Like even the way they dance around the powwow is like the opposite way than we do it. Like it's just like completely. <laughs> they rebel, different. just go counter. Yeah. Well, it's not them. rebelling. Yeah, it's just, just different, yeah, right? Yeah. So. Uh, but in an urban setting, uh, all of that kind of gets like broken down into like just being Aboriginals in, right. in, the, in, the, in the city. So um, yeah, it, it's kind of the same when you're in an urban setting. Right. So <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like a, a melting pot of That's all right. the Aboriginal cultures kind of coming together. Yeah. We're trying kind to survive of? in a city, so we, we band together. <laughs> you just band together. All right. Sure. Well, the first time I saw you guys was at Mad Decent. It was oh, such an incredible party? show. Yeah, yeah, yeah here in Toronto. So good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, so it's obviously evolved a lot more from there. Right. Um, it's turned into quite a bit of a, almost a civil rights movement. Yeah. Um, do you guys have a goal with that? Did you start out wanting to do that or is it just kind of evolved into that naturally? Uh, yeah, no, we never went out to do anything political. Yeah. We, we, we went out to make dance music and to yeah. have a party. But it turns out that if you want to make dance music for the Aboriginal community and you want to have a party for the Aboriginal it's community, good, yeah. it's political. Right. And so that, that kind of natural and automatic um, way that the, that the politics follow what we're doing mm -hmm. is is something that is almost outside of our control. Right. It's a responsibility, and it's something that that comes with the territory as an Aboriginal artist. Right. So, are you almost kind of disappointed that that happened? Then that you should just be able to be a musician and not have to worry about that uh, the political things, or is it that something that you're really proud of that you're being able to portray yourselves and show urban Aboriginal culture? I mean, it would be amazing just to be artists, yeah. you know, just to be musicians. But we're not at, we're not at that point in our community right now. It is necessary for us to do what we're doing. It's necessary for us to take the the attention and the 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 the, the um, exposure that we're getting from 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 what we're doing and to bring the political elements into that. Yeah. So if you could get one message across, then like if you could stand on a mountaintop and there's one message was out and everybody knew it, what would it be? Uh, uh, that we're still here today and we're very positive members of society today and we're not this idea of something from the past where we're buckskinned and, and, and feathered like I'm right. wearing you know Brooklyn Nets hat and I'm still ab Aboriginal yeah. like, I can still be Aboriginal in my Nikes and stuff like that yeah. and uh, you know we're not we're not this thing and this idea and the stereotype of, of you know speaking in broken sentences and, and something from the past. All right, well, thank you so much, guys. That's uh, all I have for you today. Perfect. Uh, we're here with a tribe called Red. I'm my successor, and you're watching Best Fan TV. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you. <laughs>